your mitochondria needs to be reset. Plain and simple. If we reboot the mitochondria, we instantly start feeling better. It isn't about fasting. This isn't about dieting. It's not even about exercise. Okay, those videos on YouTube are a dime a dozen. In this video, I'm teaching you how to make your diet do more work for you. I'm going to blow your mind with the most cutting edge mitochondria science that quite frankly just makes everything make sense. You're going to walk away with an actionable plan on how to level up your mitochondria to literally make your diet work better for you. It's going to be two to three times more effective at a deep level. So here's the breakdown of what we're going to cover straight up. We're going to cover something called the fourth phase of water. This gets wild. It's Dr. Gerald Pollock's work, and I'm going to explain exactly what this quote unquote easy water is and the compelling evidence that really changes how we look at the mitochondria. Okay, then we're going to look at something called the biological water battery. So this is the mechanism by which this water turns the mitochondria into like a battery. It's going to make a lot of sense with how we burn fat and all kinds of other things. And then we're going to talk about light. So we're going to delve into the science of near infrared light and why it's actually able to penetrate deep into your tissues and why it actually might be the key to changing our mitochondria. Then we're going to connect all these theories to all the established science that's already there. And we're going to learn how this actually affects us in our day-to-day -day life. And finally, as always, I'm going to give a protocol. So I'll give you the practical real-world strategies, talking about specific light exposure, talking about different techniques, talking about hydration hacks, how you can use direct earth contact, and all this stuff to change your mitochondria. So let's get into the quantum mechanics of biology. All right, so the classical view of energy in your body is pretty straightforward. You eat food, your mitochondria burn it, you get ATP. It's pretty simple, and that's a great way to learn it for the basics. But what if there's a powerful fundamental layer of energy production that's happening that we've really been overlooking? Okay, so a while back, there were researchers that were looking at this, and there's one guy in particular, he catches a lot of flack. His name is Dr. Gerald Pollack, and he was at the University of Washington, and he had proposed a pretty radical, yet quite frankly, evidence-backed parallel energy system within our mitochondria. So at the heart of it is this concept of what's called exclusion zone water. You're going to feel really smart in a minute when I teach you this stuff. So what exactly is this exclusion zone water. We'll just call it easy water because that's what it's referred to. So when normal everyday water comes into contact with any sort of hydrophilic, which is like a water loving surface, something changes, something happens. It spontaneously structures itself into a dense ordered layer. It actually changes the structure of water, which is kind of weird and it may not make sense right now, but it will in a minute. When this happens, it's called the exclusion zone because as this structure forms, it literally pushes out almost everything else. So it pushes out solutes, particles, even tiny dyes. Like it literally creates a zone of exceptionally pure, highly organized water. It's weird. So when it gets up against a surface, it ex expels things that are not pure water. Literal water does this in our body. It's super weird. It's not a fringe theory. The existence of easy water is extremely well supported in scientific literature. That's not a question. But multiple research groups have independently reproduced these findings using literally just all kinds of different various experimental techniques. So they found that easy water is physically distinct from the rest of the water that surrounds it. So as it gets closer to the mitochondria or a cell, it changes form. So in less scientific terms, let's just like put it like this. They're able to find that easy water is significantly more viscous. It's thicker and it's more like a gel than water that's throughout the rest of our body. So if we get into Dr. Pollock's work, he basically suggests that infrared light actually shows that this water is a different structure and that it even possesses like a different optical property. So there's a specific UV absorption peak, for example, that's not present in regular water. So what I'm starting to get at, and you might be catching my drift here, is that water that surrounds the mitochondria or the cell actually becomes more, to, more photosynthetic. It can absorb light. So in plain language, it's a visibly different, highly organized form of water that naturally forms right inside your body and absorbs more light. Here's what gets interesting though. Your body is literally just full of these hydrophilic water-loving surfaces. So think about the membranes of your cells. Think about the proteins within them. Think about the folds of like inside the mitochondria. If you look at a mitochondria, it's got those little squiggles, right? All of these are sites for easy water to form because they are a surface, right? But this structural difference is only part of the story because the real game changer is that this water holds a different electrical property. So this is where the concept of easy water directly links to how we produce energy. Okay, this is extremely important. So the highly ordered 
gel-like water has a negative electrical potential. So what happens is as it forms, it pushes out solutes. It leaves the surrounding bulk water and the less structured water outside the exclusion zone with a net positive charge. So basically you have this water come in, it gets pushed, it pushes out all the other water. The new water has a negative charge. The old water has a positive charge. And anytime you have a charge separation, what do you have? You have a freaking battery, literally a battery. This isn't theoretical conjecture. Like this is real and it's been experimentally demonstrated. So there was one that was published in the journal Langmuir in 2013. It's been around a while. It showed that if you precisely place electrodes in the negatively charged easy exclusion zone water and the positively charged bulk water, you can actually measure a current flow between the two showing there is a literal electrical potential. It's a literal flipping battery formed spontaneously from water and a surface. Okay, Dr. Pollock's central theory is that this biological battery, these microscopic power packs within you can be charged by energy, particularly infrared light. Okay, so his experiments consistently and reliably have shown that when you expose water to infrared energy, the size of the exclusion zone grows. The battery gets bigger and holds more energy. Are we like plants? <laughs> like I always think of the uh, like from Family Guy when Meg is like Brian, are we trash? And it's like, you know what? Like, are we are we plants? Like, because in a weird way, it kind of seems like it's the bigger the bigger the battery gets, the more potential energy. So now pause and think about this for a second. If your body's cells are filled with these hydrophilic surfaces, and you are fundamentally a complex system of water, then you are potentially filled with trillions of microscopic biological batteries. So the question becomes, what charges them most effectively? And more importantly, how can we consciously harness the power for our bodies, right? This is like, how do we use this? I want to use it. So if radiant energy can charge these biological water batteries, sorry, I get super passionate about this, then what type of energy is most effective? The research points overwhelmingly to near infrared light. And this is due to a very specific and critical characteristic. Okay it's able to penetrate into your tissues, okay? Yeah, UVB light can, red light can, sure, but near-infrared light can really penetrate, and your body has what is called the near-infrared therapeutic window, which is a range of electromagnetic spectrum we've seen before, okay, right? 650 to 1350 nanometers. Like, if you've used a red light device before, it's right at that, 770, 660, like that whole range, right? So in scientific terms, within this window, light absorption by key chromophores like hemoglobin, melanin, is minimized while absorption by water remains relatively low. In very human terms, near-infrared light seems to be the sweet spot of light, of the light spectrum that can actually travel deep inside your body. Then we have like visible green and orange light. Like this light is great, but it might only penetrate a few millimeters of skin, which still has a profound effect, and I've done other videos on that. But red light and more powerfully near-infrared light can penetrate up to three centimeters, sometimes deeper, we're finding, which means it can reach deep into your muscles, it can go into your organs, and most importantly, it can reach the easy water forming around the folds of your mitochondria and charge it more. There is a super important nuance here though. Shorter near infrared wavelengths, so like 600 to 900 nanometers, these penetrate deeper, but they don't couple as strongly with water. Whereas longer near infrared wavelengths, so 1400 to 1900, are absorbed more strongly by water, which theoretically could mean more efficient, easy charging. These longer wavelengths have a rapid drop in penetration depth, so they might not reach the deeper EZs. That's the problem. That is, quite frankly, why sunlight is so important. Like, we get the spectrum from the sun, especially like the early morning or the late evening sun, where we're getting like a lot of these different combinations of wavelengths. Yes, we can definitely use artificial devices. I put a link down below for something called Mitolux, which is the first narrow band UVB home lamp that actually can improve vitamin D levels in your body and it can help boost hormone production. It's a really unique lamp because it combines UVB with red and near infrared as the same as natural sunlight does. This naturally lowers ROS. Quite frankly, it can actually be 10 times more effective than the sun at producing vitamin D. So you can get a daily dose of vitamin D from just a few minutes of using this thing, but it doesn't have the UVA. So you don't tan or get the skin aging from it, but it can also be used as a red light therapy device. So it's pretty cool because it has all these different settings that you can have.
So it's really great if you're working inside or you work in an office or you're a shift worker because you're able to get the benefits of sun without actually being in the sun. As a matter of fact, you could make the argument that it's even better than the sun because it's consolidated and you can get it in a short amount of time. So when you're looking at, I want the benefits of sunlight for the specific light without the skin damaging, like the, the tanning and the skin aging piece, this is a really cool thing. So I put a link down below that gets you a special discount on the Mito Lux sun lamp. Wild. Like talk about wild. And they have a couple different options. So they have a little bit of a less expensive option if you're looking for something just entry level that has a few settings. And then they have a more advanced option that has more settings. It has a fireplace setting so you can get like some flicker that actually shows to have an impact on your brain as well. Really cool stuff. So just different variety. And again, you want to use it lightly, right? You don't want to go 15 minutes in front of this thing because it's profound until you're maybe adjusted to it or you are the right skin tone that can handle that. So there's a full guide with how to use it and everything. So again, that link for a special discount, this thing is really, really, really cool. It's in the top line of the description underneath the video. If we come back to this, I mean, the very idea that specific wavelengths of light can penetrate your body and influence cellular energy isn't just a theory anymore, okay? It's really not. It's a basis of a pretty well-established and validated therapeutic practice. Although there's still a lot of opponents of it, I mean, I think it's quite strong. This is where Dr. Pollock's easy water concept really finds a compelling parallel with the established science of photobiomodulation, which is the more common red light therapy research that's out there that we all see as yeah, this makes sense. Cytochrome C oxidase, all the advanced stuff there. So we have thousands of peer reviewed studies confirming the benefits of the photobiomodulation idea. The central question then becomes, what are the mechanisms at play? How does it intersect with this easy water thing? And that's where we get into this. So the primary most widely accepted mechanism of photobiomodulation includes the specific enzyme within the mitochondria, okay? Cytochrome C oxidase. Well, this is important and we're gonna explain it, but, and we'll explain how the whole easy water battery piece and the cytochrome C oxidase piece all fold together. So the cytochrome C oxidase piece says that, okay, red light increases cytochrome C oxidase, which is complex four of the mitochondrial electron transport chain. So it's essentially the final critical step in your body's ATP energy production. It's required. Basically the metal centers, there's literal metal within the cytochrome C oxidase at the end of our electron transport chain that directly absorb photons in the red and near infrared range. So yes, red light therapy, yes, that is going to enhance those chunks of metal in our mitochondria. And this absorption is proposed to essentially change what's called the redox state. It can lead to nitric oxide leaving the mitochondria and opening the mitochondria up for producing more energy. Essentially, when you remove nitric oxide, you're removing the break off of the mitochondria. So it increases cytochrome C oxidase's activity. This, I mean, it's really cool. I mean, it allows for more electrons. You're essentially making more ATP this way. And there's lots of human and animal studies that confirm the increase in this when we use red light therapy, like after photobiomodulation treatment. Based on this science, it's very clear that red and near infrared light act like a turbocharger for your mitochondria. Okay, it's literally knocking off a brake molecule, nitric oxide, as slowing down your energy production line. So it's allowing that line to run faster and produce more raw ATP energy. But this intersects with a really flipping cool thing. So here's where they converge. Could some of the profound benefits of photobiomodulation be partially mediated by changes in the water? Is it possible that near infrared light is working on multiple levels? It's boosting ATP production at cytochrome C oxidase, and then it's also simultaneously charging the easy water battery around the mitochondria, creating what's called a proton gradient that further enhances the overall energy of the entire process. So this is where things get into a little bit more of an advanced like theory, it seems very plausible. And we are now with some of the easy water battery stuff, kind of where we were 20 years ago, 30 years ago with red light and photobiomodulation. And now that stuff's well documented. However, the International Journal of Molecular Sciences in 2020 published a pretty critical review acknowledging that yes, easy water does exist and it's a real thing and is well supported. They really questioned if it had a direct role in terms of being an energy transducer. So essentially they're saying like in human models, in animal models, in humans, we still need more definitive experimental validation, which is no surprise. It's hard to validate much with quantum physics anyway, because if you understand any of the quantum stuff, the basics of just even like the double slit theory, if you're familiar with that, like observed photons operate differently. It's hard to even look at this stuff. So while the direct link isn't fully proven, the synergy is super compelling. So both pathways like are about converging photonic energy from light 
and essentially turning into biochemical energy. And if both are happening, there are seriously profound and actionable implications for health and energy. And it's something that it doesn't hurt us to do this stuff, to get sunlight, to get red light. So I know it's been a deep dive, but I'm not going to leave you with just a bunch of theories. Like I actually want to put this into application. So if this easy water idea is indeed playing a role in cellular energy, then how do we actually apply it to supercharge energy to change our health and actually feel better? So here's some actionable strategies that I put together based on this, all right? So first off, we need to optimize that morning sunlight exposure the best we can. Or you can use the lamps that I talked about. But the sun is your most abundant natural source of full spectrum light, okay? So we're talking about those crucial, like red, near infrared wavelengths. So 10, 20 minutes in like the mid morning if you can. Right when you wake up is great too, but it's lower light. The early morning sun is what has the red and the near infrared light and it's lower in the UV. So it's not about vitamin D for the red light. It's about delivering the photonic energy that's trying to get into your tissues to charge your cellular batteries for the entire day. And then the water piece is really important. Okay, If your body is literally building these batteries out of water, the quality and structure of that water matters. So I recommend starting your day with a bunch of water. Start the day with water, okay? Maybe put some high quality sea salt or some electrolytes in it, okay? This helps the mineral balance and actually influences the structuring properties of your body fluids. So the cleaner and more mineralized the water, the less work your body has to do to structure it into easy water. However you get clean water, it's easier to structure it into this negatively charged form that's gonna create more energy. Utilize red light and near infrared therapy, the most direct way to deliver the specific wavelengths directly to your body. So just be specific about that. Use a red light panel, use one that emits light in the mid 660, 600 nanometer wink, all the way up to maybe 800 for that range and do that for like 10 to 15 minutes a day. Okay, and again, you can use that same Mitolux lamp I talked about. Then you wanna focus on areas that have high mitochondrial density. So major muscle groups, also even your gut, there's a lot of mitochondria there, literally directly on your face or in your, over your head. Okay, that can influence brain function, but also remember, we have a crud load of mitochondria in our brain. So those cellular batteries are consolidated there. You wanna incorporate sauna use, especially infrared sauna for this. Okay, high heat sauna is great, but infrared saunas are specifically designed to emit the radiant heat, which actually gets you the infrared energy. And this can penetrate the body and creates a super deep heating effect from the inside out. It's also getting that infrared light. So the deep heat has all the benefits that we get from that, the circulation, the detoxing, the stress reduction, but it also could be contributing to the growth and the expansion of the easy water. So therefore further enhancing that entire cellular battery concept we're talking about. Next one is grounding and earthing. And I love the stuff that I catch for this. This is a practice that gets dismissed, made fun of, but its potential aligns perfectly with the easy water theory. And the science is starting to legitimately catch up. Okay, the earth itself maintains a natural net negative charge. You cannot deny that. Okay, so by making direct physical skin contact with the ground, okay, it can't be on asphalt, walking barefoot on grass, sand, dirt, even concrete really. The theory suggests that you can absorb free electrons from the earth. I did a recent video talking about it and I highlighted a bunch of studies showing that doing this has profound effects. Okay, for instance, there was thermal imaging studies that show that there were significant reductions in inflammation after 30 minutes of grounding. Okay, so we've seen decreases in markers for muscle damage. We've seen like creatine kinase go down. We've seen white blood cells modulate. We've seen an anti-inflammatory influx of electrons. It is legit. Bottom line is that grounding changes our red blood cells. Okay, it essentially increases their negative charge and it prevents them from clumping as much together, which is why you get more blood flow. Okay, when they clump together less, they can flow better, right? It's reducing blood viscosity and then improves blood flow to every tissue in your body. We also know that grounding changes your vagal tone, right? It shifts your nervous system into that more relaxed rest and digest state, which crushes cortisol, improves sleep quality, and therefore improves your mitochondria, right? So given that easy water, this entire concept relies on a negative charge separation, it's highly, highly plausible that the influx of free electrons from the earth coming up can directly support the negatively charged zones in your body and topping off your battery. It's like recharging a battery. I know it's cutting edge, I know it's weird, but we're more than just chemical machines. We're energetic beings, bottom line, and we're influenced by light. We're also influenced by water. We're influenced by our environment, and we're influenced by things that we can't always put a label on. So if you incorporate this, you're not just optimizing nutrition, you're optimizing energy so you can do more with nutrition because insulin resistance, all these things, mitochondrial dysfunction, this is an energy 
issue. I did a full deep dive on how to ground and the proper ideas surrounding grounding and also the science and all the evidence if you need more evidence there. So that link is right here. I highly recommend you check it out. As always, you can trust me to go off into the weeds and I'll see you tomorrow.